Greetings. It's uh, Thursday, December 23rd, 2013. All right. I want to just do this is sort of like an addendum daily oracle. I just finished, and by the time you see this, it will already be posted, a We Have Renounced video on Dr. Peter S. Ruckman from Florida, Pensacola, Florida. And there's many things about Dr. Ruckman that I have enjoyed over the years. All that stopped when I read his commentary on Romans, okay? And even when, if you search YouTube and look for how to be saved and look under Peter Ruckman, he will say correctly to trust Christ and in his blood atonement. He has always manifested forth the doctrine in Romans 3, 24 through 26, albeit he doesn't necessarily use Romans 3, 24 through 26. He teaches trust Christ, even though he should say trust in Christ and his blood atonement. And the We Have Renounced video that will be posted, and it will explain everything as I quote from his book. But as I was doing it, there's something I want to expound on more and what he said regarding how a lost person gets saved. Now understand something. I don't do these We Have Renounced videos to um, bring attention to myself or anything. Let me read you the verse why we do them. And it's been very effective because there's been several people getting saved who are now part of our school. And that's not why I'm doing it because the school is free. Okay? okay? They don't have to pay me anything to pay the school. They're, it's free. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... Myself and the others in our church here, the Church of the Living God, and we're called that. It's not a denomination because we are part of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, and that is to be where the pillar and ground of the truth is at. And this Bible, this King James Bible, is all authority. Dr. Ruckman's fatal error, as he calls it, final authority. But then I just looked on his bookstore, and he calls it God's authority. Well, that's better than final authority. But God calls it all authority. And it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. And the pillar and ground of the truth here at the Church of the Living God, we're just interested in truth. And remember, the renouncing of these heretics. Years ago, I contacted Dr. Ruckman very sincerely, very um, nicely, and said to him these things of which he rejected. So... Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. My father commands me and the others in our church, all real believers, to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. And I will do so. I will not faint because it is not I. It is Christ in me. And I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Not walking in craftiness. I don't walk in double talk and double speech. You watch that we have renounced video. That'll be up regarding Dr. Ruckman as I quote from his book. And it is just continual double talk when he says Romans 3 and then when he talks about Romans 10. It's double talk. He, he's confused. He's delirious. That's because he's unstable. Because he does not understand God's establishment commandment. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And that's exactly what he did. And you know what? You simple-minded people out there, when Paul says in Romans 16, I'm going to show you something. When it comes to Dr. Ruckman and other heretics, if you're a true believer, I'm telling you what God Almighty says. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. I've learned some things from Paul, our apostle, as I read God's book following God's commandment on how to read it and avoid them. They're the ones causing the division and the offense, not myself. It's the ones who teach wrongly the scriptures. They're unstable. I know Dr. Ruckman is unstable by the words out of his mouth through his pen into this book. And he's unstable because he does not understand Romans 16, 25, and 26. Just listen to ex him expound it in his book. This commentary on Romans. He has no clue what God's establishment commandment is. God has given his commandment on how to be established. And if you don't follow it, you're unstable. Look, 
at how many books he wrote. This is Milk Truth. That's where I start in Romans. <sighs> when he says, and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. If you have read Dr. Ruckman's commentary on Romans, and you believe it, you're very simple, and he's deceived you. Understand something. Some people have read his commentary on Romans, like Ed Fenninger out of Texas, and uh, Edward PF123, I think his YouTube channel is, and he at one time said, just not too long ago, Dr. Ruckman is confused. He's confused on Romans 10 and Romans 3, and then he says, uh, Martin Richling is right. Well, now he's flip-flop again. You see, first he was wrong, and then we put out We Have Renounced videos, and he saw truth. Now he's flip-flop again. Says Martin Richling is wrong, and now I don't know what he believes about Dr. Ruckman now, but that's called double-mindedness. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's okay to leave error and go to truth, but then you would go back. That's double-minded. Proving that Ed Fenninger is not established. Why would he be moved? And then go back. Because he's not established. He can't handle truth. So the simple-minded will believe him. In 2 Corinthians 4, it says, But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Every man's conscience. That's why we do this here. You see, my father commands me to do this, and I will continue to do it. It's not all we do here. What do you think? I teach the church daily. I read my Bible eight hours a day following God's establishment commandment. I don't know if you'll ever get this through your head, but that's the issue. That's the issue. Let me turn off this clock. That is the issue on how you read. It's not that you read. I know he's read it last time I heard. I don't know if it, he's probably read it more, over 150 times. Well, you got to read it following God's establishment commandment. Okay? God has given the commandment. He calls it this. Listen to the words in Romans 16, 26. The commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. That's important. The commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. No matter what your traditions teach you. And if you don't see it, it's because you don't want to see it. Because you're blind. Romans 16, 25, 26, and 27 is one sentence. It has to do with how God commands you to be established. Paul's gospel, mystery, truth, then scriptures of the prophets. That's what it says. And you have to recognize it as the commandment of the everlasting God. Ruckman has no clue. All you got to do is read his book here and how he expounds Romans 16, 25 through 27. He has no clue what it is. He talks... A lot of truths that have nothing to do with the verse. <laughs> nothing. Now, the another thing, the other thing that is really, and I've already done this and I'm not going to be redundant, but in the We Have Renounced video, Dr. Ruckman for years has called the King James Bible the final authority. Final authority. No. God calls it all authority in Titus 2.15. All authority. And the difference between final authority and all authority Final authority means there's authorities leading up to it. And I guess Dr. Ruckman thinks he's the authority sometimes because he goes against the word of God. Yet all authority means God does not care what any of us think. Cease from thine own wisdom, Proverbs says. God doesn't give a hoot about what any man thinks about anything. So when you understand the Bible is all authority, not final authority. It'll radically change you because then you will never interject what you think. And God says exactly what he means and means exactly what he says. In Joshua 13, it says, Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. See, God says exactly what he means. And when he writes in Romans 16, 25, and 26, the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, the commandment there is how to be established in a faith. Okay? It's not just commanding God to tell the gospel. 
<laughs> Second Corinthians 4. So we do this to commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now, I want to show you something here. I, I mentioned it in the We Have Renounced video, but I was running out of time, and I want to just do this today's daily oracle on it. You know, Dr. Ruckman speaks correctly in Romans 3. He says, if you want God to be pleased with you and to take you to heaven when you die, trust Christ and his blood atonement. Okay. He really should have said trust in Christ. Romans 3.26 says, believeth in Jesus. Okay, and his blood atonement, which is Romans 3.25. But be that as it may, at least he said trust Christ and his blood atonement. But then he gets to Romans 10, and then he... <laughs> He spends paragraph after paragraph after paragraph trying to teach lost people that this is how a lost person gets saved. You see, and God says this is how a lost person gets saved. Paul many times throughout the Bible says in Romans 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Believeth. 1 Corinthians says it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved, for by grace are ye saved through faith. That's how you get saved. Now watch him because he can't explain Romans 10. Because when we get to Romans 10, that's one of the first areas you hit in Paul's epistle which Peter says in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16, that there's some things in Paul's epistles that are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Dr. Ruckman is not unlearned, but he's ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He has many truths, many truths, but the best counterfeits out there are have mostly truth, just a few things off. Titus 2 7 says, In doctrine we are to show uncorruptness. And if it's in milk truth here, which this is it, Romans is milk truth. Okay? He that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He can't be a teacher. That's even the ones who use milk right, Hebrews 5 says. When you're using milk correctly, you can't teach because you're just on milk. Okay? But Dr. Ruckman doesn't even use milk correctly. What does that tell you? What do the scriptures alone tell you? Let me show you something here. This is the th All I want to show in this daily oracle is how the believer gets saved, how you believe. When Dr. Ruckman writes in, on page 399 in Romans chapter 10, he says about midway down, he says, Now, if you use the Romans road to lead someone to Christ, Romans road. The Romans road is the way to hell. It's a Romans road lie. How come all the Romans road tracks end up in Romans 10? Does that make any sense to anybody? God in the first four chapters, God's a God of order, leads a lost person to salvation, specifically in Romans 3, 24 through 26. You believe in Jesus, have faith in his blood. Dr. Ruckman said that in here. If you want to go to heaven and God to be pleased with you, believe it or trust Christ and in his blood atonement. That's what he said. I believe it's page 142. Yeah, you get his commentary. Yes, page 142. I quote, do you want God to be pleased with you enough to take you to heaven? Then trust Christ and his shed blood. There you go. Trust Christ and his shed blood. That matches Romans 3, 24 through 26. If we would have put the word in in there, trust in Christ. Not trust Christ, trust in Christ. Anyways, here on page 399, when it gets to Romans 10, watch what he writes. Now, if you use the Romans road to lead someone to Christ, then verses 9, 10, and 13 are the point where you tell the sinner exactly how to be saved. A man is saved when he believes the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've already dealt with that in another video. In Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13, Paul explains how to believe the gospel. <laughs> In Romans 10, Paul's talking to a Jew during their diminishing time. 
trying to provoke them to emulation, getting a Jew to do the two things he had problem with, to confess Jesus of Nazareth was the Lord, and that he was raised from the dead, and that the disciples didn't steal the body. That's a rumor that was going around continuously, told by the Roman soldiers after they were bribed. Okay? Listen to me. There's no blood in Romans 10. None. Not a drop. That is not telling lost people how to get saved. It's talking to a Jew during the diminishing, provoking them. That diminishing is long since ended. Prayer, confessing with your mouth is prayer. Dr. Dr. Ruckman says confession is prayer. Prayer is a work. It's labor, Colossians 4.2, 4.12. It's striving, Romans 15.30. It is <laughs> good works, 1 Timothy 5. It is also helping. God tells in 2 Corinthians 1.11, Paul says, helping together by prayer for us. So when prayer is helping, so do we help Jesus save us by praying? Do we help? God says the only thing you can do is not a him that worketh not, but believeth on him. Believing is not working. It's the only thing that qualifies as faith and trust is belief. It's not a work. Do you understand? So when Dr. Ruckman, because he can't explain Romans 10, written to Israel during their diminishing because it's one of the first portions in Paul's epistles hard to be understood by unstable people, and he is unstable because he doesn't understand God's establishment commandment. I don't care what he says. He does not understand the establishment commandment and has ignored it all these years. Therefore, he's unstable, as proof in milk truth of Romans. Milk! He says, how to be saved. Romans 10, verse 9, 10, and 13 is telling the sinner exactly how to be saved. In Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13, Paul explains how to believe the gospel. And then he says the first thing is to confess Jesus Christ. He says this is how to believe the gospel. How to believe the gospel. Let me tell you something, you double-talking heretic. This is not how to believe. <laughs> when God says believe... He means believe. Do you understand that God said, the facts were this. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, Joshua 13, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. When God says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that's how you get saved. He isn't using Romans 10, How to believe. <laughs> what do you mean? How to believe. You know how you believe? You believe. That's how you believe. This is such double speech. Now listen. Let me show you. God does give an example how to believe. So this entire oracle is how to believe. <laughs> you know, if I was a math teacher and I taught 2 plus 2 is 4, I would then start getting these so-called preachers arguing with me. No, it's five. No, it's three and a half. No, it's six. No, it's two. <laughs> There's some, the wonderful thing about truth is that it's immutable. It's unmovable. And when God very simply tells a lost man, when the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But let me tell you now how to believe. <laughs> he didn't say that. He just said believe. Everybody knows what it means to believe, but God leaves no stone unturned and takes no chances with the stupid hearts of men that always just want to reconcile Romans 10 with Romans 3 because they can't explain it because they're unstable and they have never learned God's establishment commandment. They come up with a human viewpoint system of their own carnal thinking. And they say, well, Romans 10 is how to believe the gospel. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Romans chapter 4, God uses Abraham to show us how to believe. After God in Romans 3.26 says to declare, I say at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You see that? There's a period. And then he says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, 
but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, you know what God tells you? He says, believeth in Jesus. And he concludes that you're justified by faith. He then is going to use Romans chapter 4. Listen to me. Listen to the words of truth. <laughs> He's going to use Romans 4 to show you how Abraham believed. Abraham is given to us as an example on how to believe. Romans 10 is not the example how to believe in Jesus. Romans 10 is talking to the nation of Israel during their diminishing time. <laughs> Romans 4, God gives Abraham as the example how to believe. And let's take a look at it. Verse 1 of Romans 4. This is how you believe. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now that is a direct quote and example from Genesis 15. Now let's look back at Genesis 15, and we will see how H-O-W... Abraham believed. Genesis 15. Gen Abraham had no children. Watch this. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and, lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And, behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Now watch what God does with Abraham in verse 5 and 6, and watch how Abraham believed. He's the example, not Dr. Ruckman's brain, as he twists Romans 10 into something it is not. Verse 5, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Watch what God tells Abraham. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, As Abraham's looking up there, so shall thy seed be. Can you count all those stars, Abraham? And you have no children, so shall thy seed be. Watch how Abraham got saved. Watch it! Ready? This is how? Watch! Done. <laughs> Verse 6 took place in Abraham's heart, in his mind. It took place right up there. God tells us what take, took place right up there. Watch how he did it. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. Watch Abraham do it again. I'm going to show you how Abraham did it. Was he confessing? Was he praying? Was he talking? I'm going to show you it again. Don't miss it. It's hard. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. I'm going to show you how he did it. Perhaps he was looking straight ahead. Perhaps he was still looking up there. It doesn't say. But he was looking up there. God gave him those glad tidings. So shall thy seed be. And God tells us what took place right here. Watch what took place up here. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. You see that? Abraham believed in the Lord. He didn't say a word. He didn't pray. He didn't question God. That is how Abraham had righteousness imputed unto him. That's how. Romans 10 is not what Abraham did. He did not confess with his mouth anything. I'm going to show you again one final time so it doesn't fly over your heads. Let's say he was just looking straight up there. It just says he was looking up there because the Lord said, 
in verse 5, look now toward heaven and tell the stars. So Abraham's doing that. God then said to Abraham, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. So with Abraham most likely still looking up there. Doesn't say if he dropped his eyes or anything. God said, look toward heaven, and he did. And he heard those glad tidings. Watch how Abraham got saved. Watch it. Then God tells us what he did. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. And he believed in the Lord. He didn't just believe the Lord. He believed in the Lord. Abraham is our example. Go back to Romans 4. So when Dr. Peter S. Ruckman tells you Romans 10 is how a lost man believes. He's lying to you. He's deceived. He's passing along his deception. He's unstable in milk truth because he never obeyed God's establishment commandment all these years. But he spent a lot of time writing books. Genesis, I'm sorry, Romans 4. Verse 1 again, and we'll go on. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh, which Romans 10 is working its prayer, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Keep telling lost people this is how they get saved by confessing with their mouth the sinner's prayer, Ruckman. It's on your website, your stupid tract on your Bible bookstore website. But then you say in Romans 3, trust Christ and in his shed blood. That's correct. You say that's how a man goes to heaven. Why do you confuse it with Romans 10? Why is it contradictory in your book? Because you're contradictory. Because your brain is scrambled. They'll still, oh, listen to me, all you, I don't care about Ruckman, he's not going to get it. Listen to me. All you lost, deluded, deceived people who think you use Romans 10 to get saved. You're following Ruckman, you'll follow his foolishness. Do you understand me? This is milk truth. The way you get saved is to believe in Jesus, have faith in his blood fully persuaded like Abraham was, I'm going to show you. That's how a lost man gets saved. Don't believe his lies and his stupid commentary. That's what you get for reading the commentaries of men. I should send this book back to your stupid bookstore, Ruckman. I want a refund. I bought it out of the Lord's money for evidence. I'm either going to send it back or burn it. I don't want to die right now. Someone come in the house think I believed your commentary. So let's just keep it straight on the record. If I croak today, <laughs> I didn't believe that commentary. It was evidence. That's it. Um, when you tell that to lost people, how to get saved, you're lying to them, Ruckman. It says, verse 4, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. They will still owe their sin debt. This treasuring up wrath against the day of wrath, they're going to owe. Because when you mix a work with faith, you make grace no more grace. And that's what you're doing. All your years of study, all your years of defending the King James Bible, you don't have to defend the Word of God. It's the sword of the Spirit. It doesn't need your human viewpoint on how to defend it. Paul said to Timothy, preach the Word. You don't defend it. You don't defend it at all. You preach it. God's word is more than capable of taking care of itself. It's the sword of the spirit. You don't have to defend it. God's word will slice and dice any man who goes against it. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. That's how you believe. You believe. Now watch the illustration. God's going to tell it to you in four ways. In Romans chapter 4, look at verse 18, talking about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. Did it say he prayed? 
No. That he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Did he pray in verse 19? No. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Does it say Abraham so far, the way how he got saved was pray? No. Now look at verse 21. And being fully persuaded, that's how you believe. You're fully persuaded. You're strong in faith. No doubt about what? Verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. That's how Abraham believed. Not like Romans 10. He did not confess with his mouth. Ruckman, you dropped the ball in milk truth. You're confused. You won't even understand this video. You won't. You'll think I'm crazy. You all and your little minion heretics will call me the heretic. Time will come. Time will come. And I'm going to love that day when truth is made known. Now look at then verse 21 again. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, how do you know it's talking to Abraham's our example? Look at the rest of the verse. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. God did not just write that sake back there in Rome in Genesis 15 just so righteousness could be imputed to Abraham. He did not just write it for Abraham's sake alone that it was imputed to him. Verse 24, but for us also to whom it, righteousness, shall be imputed if we believe on him. Not pray, believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. You know, Ruckman, you can't read the simplest of things because it goes against everything you ever learned in your stupid Baptist denomination. The very fact that you call yourself a Baptist, you're wrong. You know what God calls me? A son of God because of my faith in Christ Jesus. That's what I am. And I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, my King, my Lord, his great son, who God gave for me at Calvary. You say on page 399 of your loser lying commentary, because, hey, no, no lie is of the truth. And if Dr. if Dr. Ruckman and all you people say, well, he does pretty good, he gets most things right, no man is perfect, remember Titus 2.7, all you fools. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. There's not to be any corruptness in doctrine. Zero, zilch, none. So, he says in page 399, Now, if you use the Romans road to lead someone to Christ, first of all, they'll wind up in hell. That's what you should have wrote. Then verses 9, 10, and 13 are the point where you tell the sinner exactly how to be saved. A man is saved when he believes the gospel. In Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13, Paul explains how to believe the gospel. The first thing is to confess Jesus Christ. That's not how you believe the gospel, liar. How you believe the gospel is exactly how Abraham believed, fully persuaded. In Genesis 15, verse 6, it says, And he believed in the Lord. Remember? He looked up there and he believed in the Lord. He didn't say a word. Abraham is put forth in Romans chapter 4 as the example. And it even says in Romans chapter 4, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. We believe like Abraham believed. That's how you believe, like Abraham. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. See, this was written for us today. To whom it shall be imputed, righteousness shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. You see, Ruckman, that's what happens when you believe the King James Bible is final authority and not all authority. 
That's what happens when you ignore the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. I challenge all of you, as I have now manifested forth the truth to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I challenge all of you, go to my website, thescripturesalonebibleschool.net. There's four lessons there on establishment. Listen to the proper teaching of Romans 16, verses 25 and 26. And then compare that to what Dr. Ruckman writes about Romans 16, 25 and 26 in this lying commentary. Because if there's one lie in it, it's not the truth. Because 1 John 2, 21 says, no lie is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. You see, when you're established in a faith, you can recognize lies very easily because you know the truth. So this entire oracle is to show you how you get saved. Dr. Ruckman says, how to believe the gospel is to confess with your mouth, which is prayer, which is a work. That's a lie. God Almighty says how you believe is just like Abraham believed, fully persuaded. That's how you believe, fully persuaded. Now who's right? Dr. Ruckman or God Almighty? You all think about that. You go to our website, thescripturesalonebibleschool.net, where there's a treasure trove of truth, where doctrine is taught, and Christ in me teaches, showing in doctrine, uncorruptness. It's not I. I'm as stupid as they come. But Christ in me teaches most mightily. And y'all hate that, don't you? 